Well, good evening. Good evening. Welcome to the First Presbyterian Church of Morristown. On behalf of our session, deacons, trustees, and staff, we wish you a joyous, peace-filled, and very Merry Christmas. We are so glad that you've joined us here tonight to celebrate the story of Jesus coming into the world. And we have prayed for you. And it's our deepest hope that you will encounter Jesus Christ here tonight. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, 
Jesus is here tonight for you and for me. So in your row, if you will take a moment, you will find a friendship pad, and we ask that you take a minute to register your attendance here. It's a great way to get to know those around you and also helps the church know how we can better serve you and our community. So if you could take a moment and register your attendance, that would be great. Also, don't forget to take a moment to silence your cell phones, please. That would be a wonderful thing for all of us. So my name is Kelly Lipensky, and I am a pastoral associate here at First Presbyterian Church. I am relatively new to this congregation. I've been here six months. And my colleague, Reverend Stuart Spencer, he's been here seven months, so he beat me by one. And he's the pastor of First Presbyterian Church. Both of us are honored to be here as part of this amazing congregation. And if you're new to this area or simply looking for a church family, I really encourage you to consider making this your spiritual home. We are a family here at First Press, and like Jesus taught us, there is always room for more. So we'd love to have you. Tomorrow morning, we offer a Christmas Day service at 9.30 a.m. right here in the sanctuary. And next Sunday, December 30th, is our fifth Sunday worship. It also begins at 9.30 a.m. here in the sanctuary, and it's a continuation of our Christmas celebration. We'll sing lots of carols, and Pastor Spencer will read a special Christmas story. And following that service, we're going to have an awesome, a special coffee hour with lots of delicious things, and rumor has it L&M Donuts will be there, too. And now, as we prepare to worship God together this evening, here's what you can expect. This service is all about the story of Jesus and how he came to us as the light of the world in the midst of darkness. Jesus is the one who offers us abundant peace, hope, joy, and love. So tonight, some special friends from our junior choir right here will share the story of how Jesus came into this world for you and for me. They'll tell this story through the eyes of several people who were there when it happened, like Mary, Jesus' mom, the shepherds, and the wise men. Our awesome readers will read the story straight from scripture, and then they'll share their own eyewitness accounts with us. So before we begin, let's pray together. Wonderful God, we come before you tonight to share your love with the world. We thank you for giving us Jesus, the light of the world, who is our greatest source of peace, hope, joy, and love. Bless everyone here tonight that they may experience your presence. And bless our awesome readers as they share your incredible stories with us. We love you, Jesus, and we ask these things in your holy name. Amen.
I would now like to invite the McNabb family forward to light our Advent candles. Good evening. At last, Christmas is finally here. Everything is perfect. The flowers, the candles, and the faces of many new friends. The wait is over, and now the celebration begins. This evening, we celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ. Tonight, we understand that the Lord has gifts for us to receive. God desires to give hope, peace, joy, and love to us. Only God has the ability to give us these things. A trusting heart is the only thing we need to have these treasures. Tonight, we can receive the greatest of all God's gifts, eternal life through Jesus Christ. We can't buy or earn this priceless gift. It must be given. In the Gospel of John, we read, For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. God did not send his son into the world to condemn it, but to save it. My hope is that everyone here this evening will go home with this gift of life in their heart. And from our family to yours, say, Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. And now, let us prepare our hearts to welcome Jesus Christ. Come let us worship our newborn king. And now, if you are able, will you please stand and join me for the call to worship printed in your program. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwelt in the land of the shadow of darkness, on them has the light shined. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and his name will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace.
You may be seated. At this time, I would like to invite our first readers, Carrie Rotter and Vivian Allen, to the pulpit to share Mary's story with us. In those days, the Emperor of Rome, Caesar Augustus, made a law. It required that a list be made of everyone in the whole Roman Empire. It was the first time a list was made of the people while Quirinius was governor of Syria. Everyone returned to their own town to be listed. Because Joseph was a descendant of King David, he had to go to Bethlehem in, Ju in Judea, David's ancient home. He traveled there from the village of Nazareth in Galilee. So he went to Bethlehem with Mary because they were engaged. She was expecting to give birth to a baby soon. And while they were there, the time came for her baby to be born. She gave birth to her firstborn son. She wrapped him carefully in strips of cloth and laid him in a manger, which is a feeding trough for barn animals. They had to rest in a stable because there was no guest room where they could stay. Did we see a star? No, we did not notice it. By the time we reached Bethlehem to be counted, it was jam-packed with people. We tried to find a place to rest because I knew the baby was coming very soon. But every room, every bed was already taken in the guest houses. The only place to stay was with the animals. So there in the place where the animals slept, Jesus, the Son of God, was born. We wrapped him in cloths and laid him in a manger where the animals ate their hay. We were so tired from our journey, but the joy we felt seeing baby Jesus was unexplainable. It filled our hearts with light and love. We knew this was the night like no other. We knew this was the baby like no other, a baby king. At this time, I would love to invite up our three incredible shepherds who will be sharing the shepherd story with us, Zach Button, Caleb Delgado, and Sawyer McNabb. There were the shepherds living out in the fields nearby. It was night, and they were taking care of their sheep. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them. They were terrified, but the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. 
I bring you good news. It will bring great joy for all the people. Today, today in the town of David, the Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. Here's how you'll know I am telling you the truth. You will find a baby wrapped in strips of cloth and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a large group of angels from heaven also appeared. They were praising God. They said, may the glory be given to the highest heaven, and may peace be given to those he pleased with on earth. The angels left and went to heaven. The shepherds said to one another, let's go to Bethlehem. Let's see these things that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby. The baby was lying in a manger. After the shepherds had seen, they, they told everyone. They reported what the angels had said about this child. All who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary kept all these things like a secret treasure in her heart. She thought about them over and over. The shepherds returned. They gave glory and praise to God. Everything they had seen and heard was just as they had been told. Did we see a star? No, we didn't notice any special star that night. We were nearly blinded by a light that was brighter than any star. It was angels. That's right, real light-emitting angels, yet they were more than just light. They were sound, too. It was a huge sound, but a soft whisper at the same time. I never heard anything like it before. One angel told us not to be afraid. We needed to hear that because we were terrified. The angel said, I will never forget what he said. He said, I bring you good news. It will bring great joy for all the people. Today, in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah of the Lord. Here is how you will know I am telling you the truth. You will find a baby wrapped in strips of cloth and lying in a manger. Then the lights seemed to get even brighter and then sound even louder. A whole choir of angels appeared, and they were singing, Glory be given to God in the highest heaven, and may peace be given to those he is pleased with on earth. The only thing that could give us more joy than the angel of the light and music was if they said it was true. If God's own son, the Messiah, was actually here as a baby in our little town of Bethlehem, boy, what a joy that would be. So we decided to check it out. We went to find this baby, the Savior, and we found him just as the angel said, lying in a manger wrapped in cloths right here in our little town of Bethlehem. It was true. Everything the angel said was true. We spread our joy. We told everybody about what we heard and saw. Just like now, we're sharing our joy with all of you. You may be seated.
And now I'd like to invite our next three readers up, Evan, Will, and Josh, to read about the wise men's story. Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea. This happened while Herod was king of Judea. After Jesus' birth, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem. They asked, where is the child who has been born to be king of the Jews? We saw a star when it rose. How now we have come to worship him. When King Herod heard about it, he was very upset. Everyone in Jerusalem was troubled too. So Herod called together all chief priests of people. He also called the teachers of the law. He asked them where the Messiah was going to be born. In Bethlehem, in Judea, they replied. This is what the prophet has written. He said, but you, in Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are certainly not the least important among the towns of Judah. A ruler will come out of you. He will rule my people, Israel, like a shepherd. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men. He found out from them exactly when the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem. He said, go and search carefully for the child. As soon as you find him, report it to me. Then I can go worship him too. After the wise men had listened to the king, they were on their way. The star they had seen when it rose ahead of them had finally stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were filled with joy. The wise men went to the house. There they saw the child with his mother Mary. They bowed down and worshiped him. They opened their treasures. They gave him gold, frankincense, and myrrh. But God warned them in a dream not to go back to Herod till they returned to their country on a different road. Did we see a star? Oh yes, we saw it when it first rose in the sky. And we know what it meant. You see, we study stars. And we study mathematics and history and religion. We know pretty much everything there is to know. That's why we're called magi. We sometimes advise kings, but this star announced that the newborn king would not need our advice. We followed the star and it led us to Judah. We knew this star was special. This star announced that this young king would be the greatest king of all time. After following the star for what seemed like forever, we headed toward Bethlehem. This star was right ahead of us and it filled us with joy. It was right over our house. We went in and saw the child and his mother Mary. We thanked the star for leading us to the new king. Then we bowed down before him. You see, this it wasn't the star that was important. The star simply showed us to find the child. His name is Jesus. We gave us we he gave him our treasures, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And then we went home. We just kept studying stars, but we will never see another star that gives us as much joy as that one. Thank you. 
Our final lesson tonight is about God's eternal love. And in the New Testament, in a book called John, we hear how God's love was for all of us since the beginning of time. This is what's written in the book of John. In the beginning, the word was already there. The word was with God, and the word was God. He was with God in the beginning. All things were made through him. Nothing that has been made was made without him. Life was in him, and that life was the light for all people. The light shines in the darkness, but the darkness has not overcome the light. The word became a human being. He made his home with us. We have seen his glory. It is the glory of the one and only who came from the Father. And the word was full of grace and full of truth. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son. Anyone who believes in him will not die, but will have eternal life. God did not send his Son into the world to judge the world. No, God sent his Son to save the world through him. Please be seated. How do we respond to such wonderful news? Well, we give back to God our hearts. And that's what this moment in our worship service is all about. It's a time when we pray together. It's not just me praying. It's all of us praying together. As I pray, there'll be a moment or two for us to remember others. People on our heart that need our prayers, the sick, or the grieving, or those who just feel lost. But this is also a time for us to turn our lives, all that we are, all that we have, over to the care and the love of God. Here is Christmas in a phrase. For God so loved the world that he gave. Whenever God loves, God gives. And that's the good news of Christmas. Will you join me in prayer? Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, our Heavenly Father, with the angels we sing and glorify your name, thankful for all that you have given us. We thank you for your presence in the world, in the church, and in our lives. We thank you for our families, our friends, and for this church family. 
But today, most of all, we are especially grateful for the gift of Jesus, your son, who gave up his heavenly home for first a manger and later a cross so that we might know new life, forgiveness, and salvation. A gift that, can, that never spoils or fades. With the angels, Lord, we desire peace on earth. A peace that is longer and deeper than the sadness and anger and violence that seems to fill our world. Having heard the good news of Jesus' birth, we want to pray for others. We pray for those who are sick. We remember children and young people who are tonight in hospitals or rehabilitation units, as well as others, Lord, whom we're carrying in our hearts tonight. We bring before you those who are lonely or sad. We pray for families and individuals who are grieving loved ones who have died. May your light always shine upon those we love who are apart from us. We pray, Lord, for the poor and homeless in our community. Please use us and all the blessings that you've given us to help them. O radiant dawn, Lord Jesus Christ, splendor of eternal light, come to us, each one, with your light and life and joy and hope. Having seen the light of Jesus, may we now reflect that light to our dark world. For we pray all of these things together in his name, for he has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. How do you welcome Jesus? Well, you, you, you follow the example of the Magi who gave. So tonight, thank you for your generous support of the ministry and mission of First Presbyterian Church. We are here to serve God in this community and in the world. And so now let us continue to worship God with glad and overwhelming hearts filled with joy. I invite our ushers to come to receive our evening offering.
Friends, will you join me in prayer? Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for opportunities to give. Thank you for the incredible blessings of our lives. And thank you especially for the gift of new life and salvation in Christ. Lord, having received so much, may we be generous in all phases and aspects of our lives. May we be generous with our words, our forgiveness, our listening. And Lord, with the embraces that we can give to each other in our families and in our community. Lord, most of all, we desire to please you, to bring you glory. And so we offer these prayers in Jesus' name for his sake. Amen. We are now about to...
friends, Jesus is the light that shines in the darkness, and the darkness will never overcome it. And as we go from this place, remember that you reflect the light of Jesus to whomever you may encounter. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. So may God bless you and keep you, and may God's face shine upon you, and may you go with the fellowship of the Holy Spirit and the peace and love of Jesus. God bless you.